So um, this is the stress cup PowerPoint. If you're looking at this PowerPoint and you realize it's only two slides, that's that's good. That's true. It's accurate. Don't worry. Um, I really just want to uh, spend a couple of minutes kind of playing out this metaphor with you a little bit. Um, and hopefully that also helps you to, uh, to do your assignment, your journal assignment well this week. Okay, so there's actually a ton of uh, information here. So what I want to do is I want to talk to you uh, sort of just about a, a way of conceptualizing stress. It's a little bit metaphorical, but some people are into that. So um, I want to talk to you about your stress cup. And I want to say that your overall level of stress um, has to do with you, and I'm going to call you the cup, and also your environmental stressors. So I'm going to call that the liquid. So if you want to, uh, if you want to sort of look over here. So for example, this is the same person. This is the same cup, um, but with different amounts of liquid in it. So right here, maybe this is the beginning of your, you know, uh, semester, and uh, there's not too many assignments due, and and uh, things are going well, and it's pretty manageable by the time you get to, you know that, that week, it's like week, it's always like week 12 or something, all your papers are due and all your tests are due, and it just slams you, you know, um, or finals week, uh, or say here you have, uh, you just have more environmental stressors, and of course, that doesn't have to be school, um, as we know about stress, this could really be, this could be anything, so uh, it could be a combination of stressors, uh, you could, if you wanted to, you could sort of, you know, pour some coffee in here and that's your school stress. You could pour some orange juice in there and call it your family stress. You could put some, uh, you know, like Sprite in there and call it, uh, you know, uh, a political stress or, or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I want you to just, I, I just want you to be thinking about kind of options for, uh, for how you want to conceptualize this. Okay, so the liquid here is level of stress. Uh, or no, 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 I'm sorry, liquid here is just what your stressors are, um, and then the cup is you. And so here we have a difference in l level of environmental stressors, right? If you come down here to the corner, these are different kinds of cups. So um, not everybody looks like this cup. People look different. Um, this, oh man, a lot goes into this. Um, just you and your genetics, right? Some people are more impulsive, some people are... Um, their nervous systems are more sensitive to threat. Some people um, uh, have genetic predispositions to anxiety. Some people have um, genetic predispositions or, uh, or body conditions that uh, give them a low frustration tolerance or things like that. So there might be even sort of physiological differences. You also have differences in uh, the way that you were brought up, what you learned uh, from your family, um, the kind of person that you are, if you're quite structured or if you're quite flexible, um, all of those things. You might also have um, uh, sort of strengths and weaknesses according to your culture. You might have lots of social support. You might have um, uh, you might have a really good. Uh, you, you might already have some really good coping skills or or resilience. So what we might say is. Um, is that like this person, this big tall cup right here, maybe this person is more resilient than this person because they could accommodate more liquid before it all fell out, right? And, um, and so I would suggest that, you know, if your amount of liquid um, fills up your cup until it overflows, then, then, we, then we have what our culture kind of talks about as being stress, right? Overstress or distress, um, stress that is beyond your perceived ability to cope with it, that kind of thing, right? And, um, and I just put this over here because I know that one of the things we're doing is differentiating stress from trauma. And so I have trauma here kind of represented as a big, huge stressor that pours in um, in a way that is, that is overwhelming. Um, oftentimes this happens quickly, but not necessarily. And uh, sort of regardless of the shape of whatever this cup is right here, it could be a wide, shallow cup. It could be a big cup. It could be a neck. It doesn't matter. You, you pour in a trauma-sized stressor in here, um, and it's going to overflow uh, no matter what. So remember, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about stressors, not traumas. And so uh, I just want you to think about this. So what are some ways that we can manage for our 
cup to not overflow with stress. Um, well, we could change our stressors, the amount of stress that's coming in, right? In, in various ways, we could, we could m make the amount of liquid that's pouring in less, or we can change the size of our cup. We can change the size of our cup through things like going to therapy, um, increasing our social support, uh, increasing our coping resources, any of those kinds of things. So uh, that's it. I, I just want to kind of give you this as a, uh, as a little metaphor, and then you can go and you can do your journal assignment, which is to tell me about it. You can tell me about your cup in a narrative kind of way. You can, uh, you can draw your cup, you can make a chart about your cup. I want, you to, uh, I want you to have freedom, but I want you to really think about it. Okay, you can label anything that you'd like to label, um, and, and in any way that this uh, makes sense to you. Have fun.